In this episode, we'll examine non-carbon based life. Life on Earth is based on carbon, which is often claimed to be the only molecule that life can be based on. But what if that is just the limit of our imagination and current knowledge? In this video, we will focus on the most popular alternative to carbon, silicon. Silicon comes with a lot of challenges as a molecule for life, but under the right conditions, it might work. But these conditions are not what you would expect. They are exotic to us, and silicon-based life could fit perfectly in another liquid than water, a very extreme liquid. We'll go through these conditions and speculate on what life here might look like. Silicon has for decades been considered as a serious alternative to carbon for life. One of the main reasons for that is that silicon belongs to the same group as carbon in the periodic table, and therefore they share several properties. One of the most important being that it is tetravalent, which means that each silicon atom can create up to four bonds to other molecules. This should allow it to create the complex molecules that are needed for life, just like carbon. But there are several challenges with silicon as the base molecule for life, which we will examine. Several of the points that I'm going to make in this video is going to be based on a scientific paper that was published by MIT scientists in 2020, which I have linked in the description. Silicon is the second most abundant element in Earth's crust, but most of it is not available for life. It reacts strongly with oxygen to form silicon dioxide, or silica, which makes up rocks. The silicon-oxygen bond is very strong and stable, and takes a lot of energy to break. So for silicon to be a candidate for life, it would have to be in an oxygen-poor environment, or exist where silicon vastly outnumber oxygen, binding most oxygen into rock. Given that oxygen is one of the most abundant elements in the cosmos, these type of environments might be rare, but given the vastness of the universe, there might be many worlds like that. Indeed, planet formation models allow oxygen poor worlds under unusual circumstances. Another issue with silicon is that forming or breaking many silicon bonds require more energy than for carbon. Energy underpins life, and evolution strongly favors using the most energy efficient solutions. Therefore, carbon would be strongly favored as a building block for life instead of silicon. However, there could be conditions where silicon might still form the basis for life. On Earth, there's surprisingly little carbon in the crust, even though it is the fourth most common atom in the cosmos. It makes up about half of a percent of all the matter in the universe, but only 0.025% of Earth's crust. The majority of Earth's carbon is in the inner parts and core. So maybe if this balance is shifted a little further, carbon could be so rare that it becomes a limiting factor for life. Then evolution would drive the formation of mixed carbon-silicon compounds. And if carbon is rare enough, silicon might dominate as a substitute. But there could be another good reason for using silicon, even if carbon is present. Certain silicon-based compounds might provide unique structural or chemical advantages. So even if it is much more energy costly for life to work with silicon, evolution might still drive some use of silicon to exploit those advantages. Silicon has another challenge. In general, silicon compounds are not stable in water. They hydrolyze and are quickly broken down. That is a problem because water is one of the most common molecules in the universe, and it would be toxic for any life that is based on silicon. But the MIT paper found that silicon chemistry could work well in another liquid, and it is one that I did not expect at all, concentrated sulfuric acid. For us, this is a very potent acid that can dissolve flesh and metal. But surprisingly, many silicon-based molecules are very stable in this liquid. Therefore, silicon-based life is unlikely on watery worlds like Earth, but might be feasible where liquid sulfuric acid exists. Before we examine these worlds where silicon-based life could exist in concentrated sulfuric acid, here are some important points to consider. Could multicellular and complex life evolve using silicon and sulfuric acid? Multicellular life like animals need a lot of energy. And there is a general scientific consensus that for multicellular life to evolve, oxygen is likely required because it allows a lot of energy to be extracted from food. But since silicon-based life can likely only exist under oxygen poor conditions, there will be a limit to how much energy can be available to this type of life. And the problem gets even worse when considering that silicon reactions in general need more energy than carbon. 
So complex multicellular life might not be possible with silicon. However, life and evolution are wondrous. And maybe if there are very strong advantages to being multicellular on silicon-based worlds, evolution might be able to overcome the limits of low energy availability. And I will assume that that is the case when I go through these worlds. Here's a funny and interesting thought. If complex and intelligent life based on silicon and sulfuric acid does exist, then to those creatures, Earth life would be something out of a science fiction horror story. The oxygen we breathe could mineralize them into rock. And if we spat on them, the water in our saliva would dissolve that tissue. And the same goes the other way around. Concentrated sulfuric acid is not good for Earth life. So there would have to be quite a few physical constraints set in place should we ever meet. There are at least three types of worlds where liquid sulfuric acid could exist. Whether the conditions for silicon-based life we discussed earlier like being oxygen poor, could actually exist in these worlds is not known. But let's assume this could happen and explore these worlds and do some wild speculation on what life here could look like. Before we examine these worlds, I have a request for you. If you enjoy watching this video, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron. Your support will be much appreciated and your help will help us make more and better videos. The link is in the description. One of these worlds exists right here in our solar system. Droplets of liquid sulfuric acid exist in the clouds of Venus, and the MIT paper notes that silicon-based chemistry might be stable here. There's actually a very intense discussion going on whether life could exist in Venus's atmosphere. And a few years back, a chemical compound called phosphine, that is considered a biosignature, has been detected in Venus's atmosphere. And several space missions are planned to go to Venus to investigate this further. Life in the sulfuric acid droplets would be microbial, and the strong winds in Venus's atmosphere could keep this life aloft. Venus has an atmospheric surface pressure about 90 times that of Earth, so these microbial organisms could also stay in the atmosphere by buoyancy. A similar strategy has been adopted by some cyanobacteria in Earth's oceans, which use gas vesicles to control buoyancy. In a similar way, microbial life in Venus's atmosphere could make small gas vesicles to keep floating. These microbes could form the foundation for an ecosystem, assuming that silicon-based life allows for such complexity. Small creatures could feed on the floating microbes, like krill feed on algae in Earth's oceans, which again could be the food for small aerial fish-like creatures, or for large filter feeders, as we know from Earth. The second type of world that could have liquid sulfuric acid are moons of gas giants. We have one interesting candidate right here in our own solar system. The surface of Jupiter's moon Io has large amounts of sulfur on its surface, but it is too cold for liquid sulfuric acid to exist here. However, if Jupiter Io-like systems orbit closer to their host stars, liquid sulfuric acid might exist on the surface or within the crust of Io-like moons, forming oceans that life could exist in. Life on gas giant moons would have very different conditions from what we know. Gas giants like Jupiter create high amounts of radiation that will bombard the surface of any moon. Life could be impossible on the surface unless life evolved extreme radiation resistance. And maybe it could even use this radiation as an energy source. Radiation penetrates poorly into solid rock. So if life is not possible at the surface, it could exist in liquid sulfuric acid pockets beneath the surface. But how could life here get energy? The strong gravity from the gas giant will stretch and squeeze the moon, creating internal heat which can help drive volcanic activity. This can help form energy-rich chemical compounds that could serve as food for life there. How common Jupiter Io-like systems are and whether they could host such habitats are not known. The third type of world that could have liquid sulfuric acid are planets orbiting close to red dwarf stars. Under the right conditions, these planets could be baked losing their water in the early stage of the star system's development. But as the star settles down, a continuous supply of sulfur from volcanic activity could result in the production of stable liquid sulfuric acid. Life on a planet orbiting a red dwarf star will be very different from what we know. If the planet is orbiting very close to its host star, it will be tidally locked. This means that the planet will always show the same side to its host star much like the moon always showing the same side to Earth. The side of the planet facing the star could be incredibly hot and not viable for life. 
while the back of the planet will be in eternal darkness and very cold. But it has been speculated that life here could exist in the Terminator zone. This is a small zone between the hot and the cold side of the planet, where temperatures are moderate and life could exist. So what type of life could exist here? Like plants on Earth, photo harvesting organisms could form the base of an ecosystem. But because the light being dim in the Terminator zone, they might look very different. Instead of being a green color, plants could evolve to be black or deep purple, optimized to capture every photon. Since the light continuously only comes from the same angle, plants would orient their leaves towards the star. Herbivores could graze in the dark foliage while being predated on by other animals. But even if life could exist here, it would have to overcome a major danger. Red dwarfs have frequent flares, which means that they produce high levels of radiation bombarding any nearby planets. Life here would have to evolve ways to survive such flares. Plants could evolve sensory systems to detect the start of a flare, folding their leaves into protective pods. Animals might retreat into underground burrows, or they could evolve radiation resilient shells that they could hide in during flares. Whether these three types of worlds are feasible for silicon-based life remains unknown. And maybe there are many other types of worlds where silicon-based life could exist. Maybe there's a silicon-based intelligent being out there right now speculating on whether carbon-based life could exist and what it might look like. If you're interested in life not as we know it, then check out this video on seven non-water liquids that life might exist in. You can watch that by clicking here. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos of what alien life might look like.